now WJCU University Heights takes a break from the Heights programming to bring you Jewish Community Radio. Weekly half hour every Friday where we bring you what's happening in the Jewish community both locally and around the world and of course today is no different. We have a lot going on today and ooh, where do we begin? I, wait, this is going to be one of those kind of more or less one topic kind of shows. Uh, and also, well, well, if we run out of time, there'll be. I mean, if we run out of topic, we have other topics. But yeah, we we, we got a big one pro- to cover. Right. We see. Here's been the problem. The problem is, is that about two weeks ago, the the Holocaust uh, book scandal hit, and it hit, of course, right after we had pre recorded. Yeah. So Fred and I talked, and we said, you know, we should just devote the entire show the following week. Now and then again. Right after we put that show in, even though it was Thursday night, <laughs> the day before showtime, yeah. another story hit. And um, I'm actually going to introduce this topic. So anti-Semitism comes in many, 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 many different forms. And by the way, let me, let me the... say one thing. Let me say one thing before you continue, if I may. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't like having to do these shows where we're on one topic. And when we do it is because we are so disturbed by what's happening that we feel compelled to do it. I have to throw that in. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. So, um, so basically, a lot of people are familiar with the standard Jew hatred form yeah. of anti-Semitism. Uh, people are familiar with Holocaust denial. People are familiar with um, anti-Zionism. These are all very, very familiar topics. Now, there's another form of anti-Semitism, actually, which is the idea that... Um, about remo- removing Jews from their religion and yeah. proselytizing them over to Christianity. Now, I just want to provide a disclaimer. This is not the belief of every Christian. Uh, there are Christians out there that are very supportive of the state of Israel. There are Christians that are very supportive of Jews as a religion, as a cultural um, identity, as an ethnicity. And that's not what this is about. Yes. Uh, so right after we recorded last week, um, I, re- I looked in my, my news feed and I saw this uh, message about this ongoing uh, problem that's been going on actually in Israel. This has been going on for many, many years. So we're used to various um, Messianic groups approaching us. Now, they don't approach Fred and I, I think, because we, we, we just show them that we, we know more than they do. So Let me explain, okay? In general, what happens is, is that... The, the Messianics who try to turn every Jew into Christianity, they don't come to or after or approach the Orthodox Jews because they know that we know enough that we're just going to tear them apart. They're not going to win us over. They don't stand a chance at it. In fact, a lot of people, like including myself, like to have fun with these people and will uh, basically drive them crazy Showing how they are wrong, and I can do that. I know well, Ellie Shevard can do that. It's been a long term, right? But you see, that's a long. That's been a long term belief. It's okay. They're not going to come after the knowledgeable Jewish people. No. However, the the news story that's been hitting, off and on for about twenty years, but more recently, has actually been about um about the uh, Messianic groups actually um based in Israel. Posing as Orthodox Jews. Yes. Um, and so they're living within the Orthodox community, dressing like Orthodox Jews, uh, appearing to keep kosher, sending their kids to Jewish schools, keeping Shabbat, whole nine yards. There was um, a rabbi, he was exposed back in May. And then uh, last week, another ra- another family was exposed. And this is where it gets extremely problematic. So this particular family actually went around the country every time they were about to get exposed they moved again but they were able to build credentials in different cities um cleveland was not on the list just to let people know and in one city in texas uh, one of them was even a kosher supervisor so where this gets extremely problematic for us is because there are a lot of rules within judaism that we're obligated to follow And if somebody else is not obligated to follow them, we don't feel that they might have the same accountability to those rules, uh, such as kashrut, such as keeping kosher, um, 
marriage and divorce rules, all kinds of things. Uh, it just there. It's just not done. We can also not ask a non-Jewish person to do on our behalf something that we're obligated to do. Um, we can't even ask a non-Jewish person to do something that we're not allowed to do. So as an example, we're not supposed to directly ask a non-Jewish person to turn on a coffee pot for us on Shabbat because we forgot to turn it on. Yes. That's just very important for people to understand. So it goes both ways. It's not looking down on a non-Jewish person. It's we, we know you're not obligated to follow these rules, but at the same time, we're not obligated to even, we're not even supposed to be asking you to break the rules on our behalf. Yes. So that's where this, this story kind of hit me because like, as Fred said, normally we figure, oh, uh, those of us that are more knowledgeable about Judaism, those of us who follow the, follow the laws, the halakha on a regular basis or study quite extensively, we feel pretty bulletproof when we confront uh, Messianics. However, these are now Messianics who are living and they're Christians, they're not even Jewish. And they're living amongst other Orthodox Jews. Posing as Orthodox Jews. Yeah. And, and, and here's the problem. Let me, let me give you an example of the problem, if I may. Okay. You have a question whether something is kosher or not. No, well, 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 let me give you a simple, a simple example. You are overseeing what is kosher. Kosher supervisors in that case. Exactly. So right. you so when somebody who who is not observant, they may not care as to what's actually in the ingredients. This is a, let's say a Jew, okay, is a kosher supervisor, but they don't really pay attention to the laws. They don't keep the laws. They may not really care, and they may just throw in something into something because they don't care, as a spite thing or whatever. That can happen. So we don't even allow. Be, it doesn't always have to be spite. It could be whatever reason. I'm not going to get in. It yeah, yeah whatever spite. reason. It could, but, it could just be lack of knowledge. It could yeah. just be. So, so the point is right. that we we can't. We don't. When it comes to kosher certification, for example, the person doing it must be observant. So it's not that we don't. We, we don't. It's not that we don't trust somebody who's not Jewish, but we, the person themselves has to care about the law. They have to observe the law. Because they otherwise they make this and they don't care, and, and that's also the issue. to a greater extent, it's not just the ability to observe the ritual laws; it's also the ability to observe the ethical laws. And also because... that you are also in process by by saying something is kosher, you are obliging others to that standard that you don't care about. That's where it can harm somebody. Because let's say it's somebody who, who does not care if it's kosher, overseeing kosher, they put something that's not kosher because they don't care. Guess what? You have, you have caused damage to other people because their dishes may no longer be kosher because it's the items, because you threw something in there that wasn't kosher. So it has effect down the line. Definite effect down the line. So it is a problem on many, many levels. I just have to throw that in. I'm sorry. No, you're absolutely you're absolutely fine with that. Uh, just to give a, an example that a rabbi gave many many years ago, uh, there's a product on the market. We uh, in our house we jokingly call it a uh, crab with a K. Mm -hmm. it, it's um it's surimi. It's made out of um it's actually made out of pressed uh, processed fish. It's a Japanese import. Came out on the market about I think sometimes seventies or eighties. Um, I remember seeing it in the stores a lot before I was ever keeping kosher. And, uh, but we're, but, and also I'm just going to say truthfully, since I didn't grow up keeping kosher, it really doesn't taste anything like real crab. I'm just making sure people get the texture is different. But anyway, the point is, um, if somebody were to make something and try to convince me that it had the crab with a K and I believed them, but then it turned out later, it was the real crab with a C. Uh, now I've committed a sin of ignorance and this person's also committed a sin and who knows maybe they cared maybe they didn't maybe they didn't know better it really doesn't matter but the point is it, it's just extremely extremely problematic and not just from the standpoint of trying to proselytize it's just problematic from the standpoint because then it causes other people to sin and it's very strong in the in torah it actually says do not put stumbling blocks before the blind yes 
And okay, we, I think we've cleared this up. So, so go on, go on with the story. I'm sorry, I, I took you off. No, no, that. you're fine. I mean, there really wasn't much else to the story. I just wanted to make sure people were aware that this is something that we are encountering on a very regular basis. Hasn't happened so much to me. I've noticed in, when it comes to mail, I don't receive nearly amount the same amount of mail that most other people have been receiving. Maybe I'm on the wrong list. I don't know. But um, I've been receiving um, information about mailings where people are being invited to various events sponsored by Messianic organizations or there's Messianic missionaries in the neighborhood. And it's so just it's just to make people aware that this is a problem and why it's a problem. Yeah. And, and it, frankly, it, and that's really what it is. And frankly, we don't like it because basically you're, you're coming to me. OK, let me let me put let me put it this way. When you come to me and you say to me, I want to change your religion, what are you really saying? Um, you're saying is, you know, okay, well, I, I want to teach you something about Christianity. What you're really saying to me is, you don't respect me for who I am. You don't respect Now, if somebody says to me they want to teach me something about Christianity, I might be willing to listen. It, but I'm not going to necessarily agree with them or want to go along with them. But you had a different point about the let me, I have to convince you why your religion is wrong and mine is right. Yeah. That's where I have the problem. Yeah, exactly. I may, I may have misspoke, but still, but essentially, yes. So when you come to me and try to change my religion, you're saying I don't respect you or, who, or, or what you believe in. Why is that an issue? Well, when you, say, when you come to me and say to me, you're wrong. I don't respect you. I want to change you. I want you to become more like me. I want you to be this. I want you to be that. What you're really saying is that you don't respect me as a Jew, as a person. Because my belief is something other than yours. You don't respect me. And when someone... Well, isn't that also a cautionary tale for almost every relationship out there? Yes. If you're in a relationship with someone... And it's going great in the beginning, and then they want to change things that are at your core. Yes. Then it's like they didn't fall in love with you. They fell in love with what they want you to be, and maybe they want you to be a clone of them. Yeah. And so when we get these situations where somebody is trying to change us. Okay. You don't respect me, who I am, as I am, what I am. You just don't. I don't want to be associated with people who don't respect me. If you come to me and say to me, oh, well, you're a nice guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I want to change you. Really? Wow. That is utter disrespect to who I am, period. Utter disrespect. I'm not good enough for you. So you come to me and why? Because you want to, well, if you save somebody, then you become saved. Oh, I see. So you're doing it for your own selfish reasons. Now, this is not everybody. This is some Christian groups. Uh, but, you know, we don't like uh, being told this. It's not nice. In fact, I would say that it is downright... Um, What's the word I could... Well, I'm trying to think of a nice word for it. Uh, it is simply um, disrespectful. I'll be nice about it. Well, it's a... It's it, it's what, as I said in the beginning, it is a solid form of anti-Semitism. Yes. Um, the early church, and when I say the early church, I'm talking about over 1,000, 1,500 years ago. Um, there, There's texts that talk about um, the Jews' rejection of Jesus, and that's and so why the the ministering went to the Gentiles to accept him. But there was a lot of rhetoric within the church for almost two thousand years that expected Jews to pay the price for the rejection, and it's very it's very strong in the anti-Semitic narrative. And so some people felt, well, if we convert the Jews away then it's sort of like they're paying back the sin. However, that wasn't necessarily true. During the uh, Spanish Inquisition, there were, uh, there were Spanish Jews who uh, converted. Um, 
some actually did it out of their own free will. Some did it out of force. Either way, they were never safe. It didn't change anything. And there also, by the way, a lot of a lot of Christians who believe that um, the Jews' existence is the blocking of the second coming. Well, gee, if you are believing that um, uh, I am the blocking existence of your Messiah coming, um, wow, you guys, I, I'm sorry, this is just, um, I don't even know where to begin with this. You're giving me too much power. That's, that's really what it is. I don't think that my decision to not believe in Jesus is blocking your, your religious system's belief. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's one, it's one to have. It's one that your, your religion can have. I'm not taking that away from you, but you shouldn't be expounding hate in the name of religion. Yes. That's where, that's where this is getting very problematic. Please don't make me your um, your. Okay, this is just bothering me. I'm sorry. Please don't make me your punching bag for your religious beliefs. Just don't. Correct. Okay. Um, well, let's let's move on. From we, this. We're we're done. We're done with that. That's why I said there was that was only. It wasn't going to be a one topic show. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know how much more to say about that, but I do have, uh, actually, um, as I was scrolling through clevelandjewishnews.com, cjn.org, I saw this interesting headline. It said, German anti-Semitism real and perceived. I'm not going to spend the time reading the article out loud, but I guess what they were reporting on was the um, the number of anti-Semitic incidences in Germany and some feel that it isn't as bad as what's being perceived and others think it's much worse and it's a little bit of a long read so i'm encouraging people if you want you can check out clevelandjewishnews.com and look for the article it's called german anti-semitism real and perceived and i'm trying to think what else is going on this week not much um i i don't know fred did you have any plans this week well i tell you i want i want to continue this topic slightly different but relatively um, uh, on this. So one of the problems we have is, um, okay, after we saw this, we started talking about the topic, I saw something this week on a local, I should say a statewide television news broadcast. I'm not going to say which channels. I don't want to give them the credit or the plug. But somebody was presenting something called the temple of tolerance. But Ooh. the fact is that nothing more than when nothing is nothing more to think that intolerance. Let me give you a couple of the quotes, okay? And well, I'm reading for my for my wait, sloppy handwriting. The, temp, the temple of tolerance. Okay, well you you talk about it. I'm gonna do some research. Okay. The the person said um when a story of intolerance Wait, wait, wait. Okay, my, 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 okay. my handwriting is a little sloppy here. I, I didn't quite, I kind of is sloppy. Okay. You come out to an area, you don't have two ways to go. You have three, three ways. Every way of, uh, leads to Rome. So it does not matter which path you take. Oh, so everything leads to the church. Okay. Um, then it goes on and says, I always tell people that I built it for kids, the Jewish center kids, the kids who are in trouble. Okay, so you built your temple of tolerance to lead to Rome, which is obviously you're saying it goes here. So maybe you have intolerance to Jews because you're saying all the Jewish kids are in trouble. He continues, I believe when I saw the kids in the Jewish center, I realized they come out of chaos. A lot of them, cops coming to the house, mom and dad, a lot of addiction problems. Really? The Jewish homes, the Jewish families where, have where way... Where is this? This is in the, in the, the guy commenting on the, in the little piece in a newscast that was where, national. Where are these? Where are these? The, I'm just confused. Oh, where this is in Wapakoneta, Ohio. Families? 
Wapakine. No, that I got. That I got. But there's not a lot of Jewish people living around there. That's why I'm a little confused. Yeah. Yeah. So he's looking for the kids coming out of chaos. And he wants to bring them to Rome. So in other words, what he's really doing is that he's taking the Jewish kids, looking for the Jewish kids, and wanting to bring them to Christianity. That's, that's to avoid what he sees as chaos. They come out of chaos. A lot of them. Cops coming to the home. Mom and dad. A lot of addiction problems. Okay. The Jewish homes have some of the lowest addiction rates anywhere. Just saying. And the guy goes, okay, first of all, in, in this temple of tolerance, I guess temple gets to go through the Jewish kids' uh, temple. Sounds, uh, sounds more Jewish. Um, he has an image of an angel... Um, Which oh oh well, but not every Jewish person calls well the house he's, of worship of temple, and actually there's Christians who call their house of worship a temple. True, true, but this guy was clearly targeting the Jews if you listen to the uh, to this little uh, little piece. So so yeah, you see an image of an angel, and then um, um, uh, he says uh, when you change one. My phone's ringing. See, this is live radio. Sorry. Um, <laughs> when it's you... called a silence button, Fred. When you Talk change, you know, mode, he, he says. He says, when you change one person, you change a pyramid of dysfunction. I don't know. I'm interpreting this as Jewish dysfunction, because the whole time I'm talking about Jews and Jewish kids. Excuse me. This is the kind of thing we hate. I mean, granted, I don't know more about about this than I saw on the newscast. But if the newscast is supposed to be him promoting his temple of tolerance, which is really intolerant toward Jews. And then as I'm reading through uh, different things on the internet describing what you just did. Uh Uh-huh. I I don't know where that came from with what you just described because it just looks like this big pile of rocks on this guy's lawn. Exactly. Exactly. So, oh, I did find the right place. Yeah. Okay. It's, well, I mean, I'm going to go with you on the intolerance because that was just literally what we were talking about. If you're trying to change me, if you're trying to take me away from something. And it's also the reverse. It actually says in the Talmud, if you've saved one life, you've saved the entire world. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about changing your religion. We're not talking about changing your outlook. The opiate crisis is a valid uh, tragedy that's universal. It has impacted people in the Jewish community, but we're not, we shouldn't, we're not to be singled out for, we have more crimes, we have more chaos, we have whatever. That's why I'm really, really lost on where he's getting his ideas from. I will tell you just as like a little bit of a, um, a word study, the word temple actually comes from the Latin templum. It means Mm -hmm. a form of sanctuary. Um, I don't really want to promote him any more than we have. Please, yes. So I'm not going to give any more details about what he claims on various sites. It just, but again, it just looks like a giant pile of rocks. It's a garden you walk through and, uh, you find inner peace through what he calls, uh, his, uh, his way to Rome. Okay, then. And that's why I find this whole thing disturbing. Uh, You are looking for ways to find me, ways to to have Jewish kids convert. Wow. Really? You're going after Jewish kids. These are his... His words, not mine. Well, I guess the good news on this story is that at least he's being honest about his intentions and his motives instead of trying to pose like us, act like us, be us. I mean, it's uh, it's incredibly offensive um, to do this because it's, and and it's deceptive. Um, Yes. They talk, they talk in a lot of um, things in society right now about cultural appropriation, about the idea that you're not supposed to mimic 
um, other groups and other cultures because it might it might be seen as offensive. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely where I put um, I put missionaries who are posing as Jewish people in that camp. But so yeah. I will I will at least give credit to this guy, like I said, because at least he's being honest about his intention. So then we know to stay away. Yeah, and what bothers me is that this gets goes on and ends up on a a well a statewide newscast. Mm. So, I mean, and then um, there was it, this this did happen last weekend in our area. I'm trying to get off this theme, but there was somebody. Uh, holding a sign um, outside of a local shopping center. Yes, I He was spotted you. on Friday and on uh, Saturday, actually, at a different street corner. Um, the sign says, Israel is sh- is killing children again. Uh, not taking away from this person's right to free speech, but I do actually wonder if somebody were to um, hold signs in other neighborhoods where there's people um, who support that country or are part of that culture, would that fly? Would that be okay? And what I'm seeing here is, this goes back to the classic blood libel. Mm-hmm. Is the Jews murder children to, uh, for their, to use their blood for matzah? And that or is why... it, Or it's part of the claim that we're killing innocent children in the Palestinian conflicts. Yes. That's exactly what it goes it. back as. Yes. And this whole thing is extremely disturbing. How it's packaged, how it's brought up. And yeah, are we upset about this? Absolutely. Does this, and this, and we try to give you the reason why. Now, a lot of people may go, oh, this is so and so. No, this is very, very disturbing stuff that we're dealing with. And frankly, we don't want to deal with this. Why should we even have to deal with this? There's no reason to have to deal with this. And yet it is um, it is literally in our face all the time. So we talk about anti-Semitism. It comes in different shades. It comes in different looks. It appears to us in many different ways. But it's still there. And it doesn't go away. It just doesn't. It hits us over and over again. And even in a Jewish area, at a shopping mall, you have a guy with a big sign. And, you know, it, it, it's maddening. Why should Jews have to put up with this for generations and generations and generations? Over and over and over again. If it's the blood libels goes back to, I forget what year it is. It goes back a long way. You have books, anti-Semitic books. It was at least a thousand years ago. Yeah. You got books, um, the Turner Diaries, the what's the uh, Protocols of Elders of Zion. You name it. There are tons and tons of books. I'll I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I used to work at a small company called NASA, and there one of my coworkers uh, was looking at a catalog from um, a bookstore. And it was, um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to mention the facts, not pointing out any group, but it was basically um, the, uh, the Farrakhan Group's bookstore. And I said, wait a minute, you get the same books, book from the Nazis, and it's cheaper from the Nazis. Look, I haven't had the stuff for me. Here's the Nazi p- uh, price for, for the same exact book. Why don't you buy it from them? And this guy was like, oh, I didn't realize. These things don't hide, they're everywhere. And it is disturbing to us. And Elisheva, we only have a few seconds to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is highly disturbing. And we're just asking people, please, stop it. Really. Stop coming to us and trying to change our religion. We know, we know who we are. We're proud of who we are. We stop don't need people coming to us. us as a people. Yeah. Stop being mad at us for our homeland our right to have a homeland, stop judging us for how we eat, how we sleep, how we How we may dress. Oh, he's wearing a white shirt and black pants. 
and he has long side curls. He must be evil. Okay, with that, we have to we have to end the show. I'm sorry, we're running a little late here. Okay, that's, Tonight, that's fine. Tonight, candlelight times uh, for Friday night, October 29th, 2021, is no later than 6.07 p.m., and Shabbat ends no earlier than 7.06 p.m. With that, Ellie Sheva, let's hope this uh, anti-Semitic stuff just stops, even for just one weekend. Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>